So this is what we showed last, last time. So this imply one over square root of two pi integral from negative infinity to e to the minus z square over two dz is equal to one. So f of z equal to one over square root of two pi e to the min <coughs> minus z square over two is a density function of a distribution on the set of real numbers, which is called the standard normal distribution. which is called the standard normal distribution. It is generally denoted by Z. We, call, we write zero, one because its mean is zero and its standard deviation is one. E of Z is equal to the integral from negative infinity to infinity Z f of z, dz. We can rewrite it this as, let me put it here, integral from negative infinity to infinity, z, e to the minus z square over two, dz, one over square root of two pi. So, to compute this integral, we can say, let u be equal to z, and v prime equal to e to the minus z square over 2. And then the integral of u v prime is equal to uv, Plus infinity to infinity, uv from minus infinity to infinity, and so I want to write here u prime will be u prime will be one. And V will be the integral from E to the minus Z square over two. Dz. Uh, I, we can do, we, we don't really need this method. I'm going to change it. 
This method will turn, turn us around. We did not need integration by part. We could use the regular integral. Look at this. e to the minus z squared over 2. What is the derivative? e to the minus z squared over 2. What is the derivative? Minus z times e minus z squared over 2. Right? So that is what is here. So it's simple as that. It's much, much easier that way. And so this is equal to, if we have that, this is equal to one over square root of two pi. You will have here e to the, you can put minus here, minus z square over two. Minus infinity to infinity. Which is equal to zero anyway because of the z square, where you put minus infinity or infinity at z square, it becomes infinity, and my exponential minus infinity equal to zero. So essentially, I want to show that the mean of the normal, the standard normal distribution is zero. Can you see that? That works. Do you see that that works? Can you see that this equals to zero? It's zero minus zero. So instead of advantage of the moment generating function, the advantage of the moment generating function is that it spares us doing this integral several times. We do one big integral and we take care and, and we use it to take care of all the other parameters. So instead of continuing with integrals, I'm going to compute the moment generating function. So the moment generating function of z is mz of t equals to e to the minus tz, exponential e to the minus tz, which is equal to integral from negative infinity to infinity e to the minus tz times the density function, one over square root of two pi, e to the minus z square over two, dz. Which is equal to one over square root of two pi, integral from negative infinity to infinity, e to the minus, I'm sorry, there is no minus here. Do we understand? The moment generating function is e to the tx. It's because of the minus that I'm putting to the standard density function that I put that minus. There is no minus there. This is tz. Each time we are doing moment generating function is the integral of etx times f of x. e to the minus z squared over 2. 
this. Which is equal to one over square root of two pi integral from negative infinity to infinity e to the minus z square over two dz <coughs> dz that is putting them together. So which is equal to one over square root of two pi integral from minus infinity to infinity e to the, let's write this as minus z square plus two z t or two t z. I'm trying, I'm putting it under the same denominator, but I'm going to do more than that. I'm going to write minus t square plus t square. Does that work? And you will see why I, I want to do that. So you can see a perfect square coming up there in this expression. Can you identify a perfect square in this expression? You know what I call it, a perfect square? If you have a square, it's a perfect square. Remember, a plus b square equals to what? Remember that identity? a plus b all square. a square plus 2ab plus b square. Do you remember that identity in algebra? Do you see something like that in that identity, in that expression? We can write this as minus z square minus 2tz plus t square over 2 plus t square over 2 dz. This will be equal to one over two pi integral from minus infinity to infinity e to the minus z minus t square over two times e to the t square over two dz. Does that work? Now, this is equal to e to the t square over 2 plus square root of 2 pi. The ink of this pen is finishing. I keep writing, it doesn't write. It's because we, it's using battery. I guess the battery is weak. <laughs> 
I don't have a new computer with the with a bad, a good pen. So here we will have. So I, I am really struggling to write and that is distracting me. I think I'm writing and it's not writing. Minus Z minus T square over two. This is over two. DZ. So we can do a change of variable here and set let u equal to z minus t. Then du is a simple change of variable equal to dz. Then this becomes dt squared over two divided by square root of two pi integral from negative infinity to infinity e to the minus u square over two du and what is this one can somebody tell me what should this be u times there's an integral here what is the integral of minus exponential minus u square over two du? We did that, yes. No. Can you look at your note, how we started today? The first thing we wrote was what? Can you look at what we wrote the first time this morning? What was square root of two pi? I don't, I'm asking, you said, you just said square root of, what, what are you saying square root of two pi? This is square root of two pi. I'm just asking, I didn't get you well. Yeah, because what did we write? What did I set equal to square root of two pi? Integral from negative infinity to infinity of e to the negative z square over two dz. The same thing as this, I want you to see that. So that is square root of two pi, and this is square root of two pi. So this equals to square root of two pi. If you follow, even when I'm not writing correctly, you will know what I'm trying to write. E to the t square over two. So mz of t equals to what? What is the moment generating function of z? What is the moment generating function of z? Pardon? e to the t square over two. Now, at h of t, we equal to the logarithm of mz of t. What is the logarithm of mz of t?
p square over two. Please listen more to what I am saying so that uh, if I'm not writing, you should know what I'm supposed to write. Last day of class and my pen is finishing, so no problem. It took us through the semester. So now, remember, to, using this method, we need to find the derivative of t, h. What is the derivative of h? It is t. What is the second derivative? So it's one. So remember that we say if you have h of t, the mean is h of zero, h prime of zero, and the standard and, and, and the variance is h prime, h double prime of zero. You see how the moment generating function can be useful. Now I can say e of z is h prime of zero. which is zero, and the variance of z is h double prime of zero, which is one, and the variance of z is equal to one. So the standard normal distribution in statistic, I just tell them that a standard normal distribution is a distribution with a bell shape curve that has mean zero, and standard deviation one, but they cannot understand how we get that. The, right, the hard work is how to do that, to find that moment generating function, which you could see is was almost the same work as to finding the mean, like finding the integral. But the advantage of the moment generating function is that it helps you directly to get the, the variance as well. Do you know how to use a graphing calculator to find a graph of a function? Do you have your graphing calculator here, anybody? So z equal to normal for one as density. f of z equals to one over square root of two pi integral of e to the minus, oh, sorry, not integral. e to the minus z squared over two from negative infinity to infinity. Can you find a graph of this function? One over square root of two pi e to the minus z squared over two. If you even get the one of e to the minus z square over two, we will see the shape. The square root of two pi is just to get the, the density one. So so the graph of this function will be something like this. We say it has a bell shaped curve. From calculus, you will see that the limit of f of z as z tend to infinity is zero. So the axis, the y-axis, the x-axis when y equals to zero is an asymptote because at infinity, f of x or f of z equals to zero. So y equals to zero is an asymptote. It's a symmetric function. You can say that some properties is anyone close to get the graph? Do you have it? Never done 
definition of a standard normal distribution. They don't know that it's actually the graph of a function. So this function is symmetric with respect to the mean. It's symmetric with respect to zero. You know how to check symmetry of a function? You do, if it's an even function, it is symmetric with respect to the y-axis for a, an even, you remember even function, f of minus x equals to f of x. So you can see that is an even function that is f of minus z equal to f of z. The limit of f of z as z tend to infinity equal to zero. So y equal to zero is an asymptote. The function is symmetric. With respect to with respect to y, it has f prime of z. Remember, f prime of z is z over square root of two pi e to the minus z square over two equal to zero when z equal to zero. So it achieve a maximum at x equal to zero. So those are some of the properties of a standard normal distribution. The cumulative distribution function. So the mean is zero and the mode is zero. You, you know that. The mean and the mode are all zero. The cumulative distribution function. is f of z equals to the integral from negative infinity to z, e of minus u square over 2 du. This is the cumulative distribution function. In particular, f of zero equals to the integral from negative infinity to zero e to the minus u square over two du that's the constant which is equal to can you show that this is equal to half you can show it in many ways. You can know that this is a symmetric function and the total area under the curve is one. So half of it should be one, naturally. You can also use the integral, knowing that the a square that we had before has a equals to square root of two pi. So half of a is square root of two pi divided by two. 
And if we divide it by square root of two pi, you get half. Do we understand what I'm saying here? You can manipulate that. So half of the curve is, so that means zero is the median. So this density function tells us that the standard deviation has a normal distribution and one of its property is that the mean is zero, the mode is zero, and the median is zero. So those are things you will learn in statistic, which you will not have to prove. Those of you who will be doing statistic, who is doing, are you doing statistic next semester? Yeah. If you are planning to do the actuary, for some reason, if you have space, add mat 1.5. It is a course which is good to take because when you are transcript, you have statistics. And when you are looking for job, and you have taken statistics, probability is very different from statistics. You can finish this probability and you don't know how to do a work on statistics, which is much easier than probability actually. You don't need to do any of this mathematics, but if you don't know how to do it, you don't know how to do it. So, so this is the standard normal distribution table. It's very useful in practice in almost all area of research, apply research and in particular in statistics. So there is a standard, we study this normal distribution because before there was no calculator and people need to use a standard normal distribution table. So if, for example, find the area, Under the standard normal curve, I hope you can read what I'm writing. To the left of negative 1.25. Find the area under the standard normal curve to the left of negative 1.24. This is what that will mean. This is negative 1.24, and you want this area. So this area is f of negative 1.24, which is the integral from negative infinity to negative 1.24 of 1 over square root of 2 pi e to the minus z square over two dz. So if you ask this to a calculus student, he will spend his whole, whole life trying to compute this. He cannot compute this one. We were able to compute it to infinity because of the, the easy manipulation of infinity by changing it to polar coordinate. But if it is a number like this, we can no more do that. We need either a calculator or a standard normal distribution table. So we are going to use both. Do you have your calculator? Standard this standard deviate standard normal standard normal distribution table. On Google you can find a lot of standard normal distribution calculator. So this is a standard normal distribution table.
and we want to find the probability that z, the area to the left of negative 1.24. So I'm going to look for negative 1.2. This is negative 1.2 here. This is negative 1.2. Now look at how it is arranged. This is negative 1.20. Negative 1.21, negative 1.22, negative 1.23, negative 1.24. So we are going to go down. Negative 1.21, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. So this is the number. I should move up and see 0, 4. And you see that number. That is the area to the left. So this table gives us the cumulative distribution function of Z. Cumulative distribution function of Z. So you can also use your calculator. From your calculator, you go to second function distribution and choose cumulative normal CDF, normal CDF. Anybody is using calculator? Otherwise, I move to the most general one. Do you have something? Second function, VARS, is near the left, right. Second function, VARS. And then go to the number two, I think, normal CDF. And then enter negative one. No, I don't know how your calculator is configured. Do you have lower and upper value? Lower value is negative something to infinity, a large power of ne a large negative power. Then you put upper value is negative 1.24. Actually, we are looking for probability of this number to the And the lower value is negative infinity. That's why you are taking a very negative number. And the upper value is negative 1.24. So you also want to know that in general. So we are going to say here that probability that A load on A plus to Z load on A plus to B is F of B F of A. We learned this before. So we know how to find f of a and f of b from that table. And for those who have calculator, you can use a calculator to get that. But if you are taking a, an actual test, they won't let you use a calculator, a, 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 that kind of calculator. They will give you this table, and you should be able to read it. So we will complete this with general normal distribution. <clears throat> A random variable if mean mu and standard deviation Sigma is called normal. C is equal to sigma z plus mu. Sigma, I'm sorry, where z is the standard normal distribution. So every normal distribution is a linear transformation of a standard normal distribution. In chapter seven, we are going to learn how to use the density function of the standard normal distribution to obtain the density function of 
the standard normal distribution. You want to observe first here that z is equal to x minus mu divided by sigma. In a lot of mathematics, you would have learned that this is called the standard score. Is this is also called the standard score. Standards. So f of x, the density function is one of a sigma square root of e pi e to the minus x minus mu of a sigma. Let's put it this way. It's minus x minus mu squared over two sigma squared. Just like this minus z squared over two. You see, this is z. What I have here is z squared over two. So this is the density function of a normal distribution. And we say that the probability that A is less than or equal to B is equal to the probability that A minus mu over sigma is less than or equal to Z less than or equal to B minus mu over sigma. So sometimes you can be asked to find, find z so that the area to the right, I could say to the left of z is 0 0.05, for example. That means this is Z, and this area is 0 0.05. That will be Z. Sometimes in the problem, they will tell you that the score is, is normally distributed with a mean and standard deviation. Find a, an employer want to hire the best 10%. What will be the minimum score? So that means if it, the best 10% is to the top part, the minimum score will be the X value so that the area to the right of it is 10%. If it was, for example, a manufacturer want to provide a guarantee period for its item, and it doesn't want to return more than 5% of those items. So you want to say, what is Z so that the area to the left, because that is the lifetime, is five percent. So what we do here is we go to the normal table. One minute, we will do this. This is the normal table. And we want to find Z so that the area to the right of Z is 0 0.05. Now, to the right of Z, we are at the positive side, so we go to the positive area. If the right of Z is 0 0.05, and this table is only giving us the left of Z, then we will do 1 minus 0 0.05 to get the left of the same number. And that will be 0 0.95. So this is 0 0.95. This is 0 0.95. So we are somewhere here. So that Z value is 1.65. This is 1.6, 1.645 is at the middle. Go over the text problem. If you have a question, send me an email. Exam will be in this room on Sunday at 3 p.m., right? Pardon? 
on the day of the exam. Mm. 